A lot of games out there are oriented towards scaring you. The enemies end up being terrifying, and sometimes it's the other way around. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 games where enemies are actually scared of you. Starting off at number 10, it's the Batman Arkham Asylum series. Let's get the most obvious one out of the way first. Before the first Arkham came out, Batman wasn't really known for stellar video games. There were some decent ones, but nothing that felt like you were actually Batman. That's what made Arkham so damn impressive. Rocksteady managed it like their first attempt, and in a lot of ways it revolutionized both stealth games and beat-em-ups. Instead of being the hunted, you were the hunter, and the enemies reacted accordingly. As you took people out, uh, the thugs in any given stealth area become increasingly distressed and agitated. They start splitting up into groups and doing things by themselves. What are you doing? I need help! Like hell. You're on your own! When they're actually freaked out, they move around in unpredictable ways and they shoot guns at shadows. They are very clearly reacting to something that is terrifying to them. Like it's possible to get them so scared that when they actually do spot you, instead of shooting like usual, they fall backwards and freak out, giving you more than enough time to finish them off. Reactive AI like this is still kind of a novel concept, so it's just not something you see at this level with such artful execution even now and each game in the series added a few new wrinkles to that system that made it even better at number nine is metro exodus it's not quite as in-depth of a system that we see in the arkham games but metro exodus has its own ai system where occasionally enemies will surrender if you take out enough of their guys. It's not something that happens every time or anything, but it makes you feel unstoppable when it does happen. And to be clear, I'm not exactly sure what triggers it either. But once an enemy gives up, they're done for good. You don't have to shoot them in the head or anything. You just take what they got and they will thank you for it. Not literally, but they'll leave you alone. In these kinds of games, the most you usually get is an enemy who's faking a surrender, but here it's genuine and it adds a lot more realism to the whole thing. I mean, if some guy came into my camp and just slaughtered 12 of my buddies, I'd be inclined to, you know, not die. I would do what was possible if there was something possible. And if that's giving up, that's giving up. I'd be inclined to give up. And number eight is Prototype. There's plenty of games where they say everyone's scared of you, but in gameplay terms, it doesn't really mean much. I'm talking about like Metroid Prime or Doom Eternal, where the in-game logs are talking about how much the enemy fears you, but for the most part, they fight like they don't. They see you and they're like, ah, I'm gonna kill him. Now that's basically true for this game, for the most part at least. There's no real fear mechanic at play in this game, but even still, few games manage to make you feel as powerful and scary as this one. There's a few reasons for that. For one thing, the streets are clogged with these endlessly panicking throngs of civilians who are just terrified of you, and the entire story has the army, the army, panicking about what you're going to do next. And when you're engaging enemies, you're bombarded with this terrified chatter. It's a game where you're basically playing as the thing, but instead of being trapped on an isolated Arctic research station, you're just in the middle of New York. Maybe the most obvious demonstration of just how scared the soldiers are of you is the accuse ability, where you can target a soldier and accuse them of being the monster. It, it causes everyone nearby to just immediately panic and shoot the guy without even thinking. That's how scary you are. Just the idea that someone is actually you in disguise is enough to get everybody terrified enough to just unload on them with no recourse whatsoever. It's even kind of darkly hilarious, but it does a great job of showing just how scary your character is in world. And number seven is the Halo series. One of the best things about the Halo games is the AI. Every enemy type behaves differently in response to changing situations in their own unique way. Elites will stand their ground and face you head on. Jackals tend to keep their distance. Grunts will vary wildly depending on the situation. If a full squad of Covenant come at you, it's usually the grunts up front, but once you take out an elite or two, they suddenly get a lot less brave and start panicking and running around instead of trying to fight you. Sometimes they totally break and try to suicide bomb you with some energy grenades, uh, usually an elite has to be almost dead for them to go for the grenades, but grunts are much quicker to give up and throw their lives away. It's a great dynamic that was established with Halo Combat Evolved on the original Xbox, and while AI has become a lot smarter and more reactive in a lot of ways, the enemy makeup has basically remained the same all these years later. It's just a testament to how well it all works and how entertaining it's always been to run around into a large ground of Covenant, take out their boss, and just watch the grunts shatter. 
And number six is Middle Earth Shadow of War, heavily inspired by the Batman Arkham games. In many ways, the uh, Middle Earth Shadow of Blank games actually expand on the fear mechanics of the Arkham games in some pretty interesting ways. There's a whole system of scaring enemies in these games, and it ties into the whole Nemesis system, uh, which is what these games are built on. Each orc has like specific abilities, strengths, weaknesses, and depending on how you exploit those weaknesses, it's possible to scare the living hell out of an orc captain and just have them run for it. It's not just captains either who get scared, like grunts can be pretty terrified as well. There's a special brutality move that causes any nearby enemies to just recoil in terror, giving you the opportunity to attack and just catching weaker enemies by surprise is enough to get them to run. It's possible to instill so much fear into a captain, they'll just run at the sight of you. All they have to do is see you and they just run for the hills. That's how scary you are to these guys. You're basically playing a boogeyman in these games. Uh, like there's so many different options when it comes to scaring enemies. Enemies. And number five is Carry On. Aside from sounding like a bag you might bring on a plane, this game is basically Metroid crossed with Prototype, but instead of fighting monsters, you are the monster. You're basically just a rolling lump of flesh, I guess, looking to absorb anything and everything into your biomass, and it should come as no surprise that the people in the secret underground lab that most of the game takes place in are just a little scared of you. Whenever somebody spots you, they scream in horror. A lot of people simply run away and don't do anything when you encounter them, and the few that do stand up to you often panic and try to get away if you get close enough. That doesn't mean the game's easy. It doesn't take a lot to kill you with certain weapons like flamethrowers, but just because some of your enemies are tougher doesn't mean they're any less scared of you. And number four is the Tomb Raider series, the rebooted ones, specifically. They might at first seem like they're primarily about torturing Lara Croft in new and exciting ways, and for some they probably do fulfill that primarily. But after a certain point, you go from the prey to the predator, and the enemies who at the start of the game didn't seem all that scared of you are suddenly now just panicking at the mere thought. There's a few key moments in the games where this sort of thing goes down. In the first game, when you manage to blow up the entire scavenger base, uh, like you get a grenade launch and just go to town. The whole sequence is just pure chaos and all the enemies are just panicking and everything's just exploding all around you. Probably the most memorable part of the third game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, occurs near the end where Lara just goes full Rambo on the Trinity soldiers that have been hunting you. It's like the scene from the first game, but like way worse. Like these guys do not stand a chance against you. It, it, it's kind of hilarious how much of a killing machine you become at this point. Like it's almost weird they're even trying to stop you. At number three is Mark of the Ninja, a game that goes really deep with its fear mechanics, actually. Uh, and maybe one of the most elaborate ones yet, too. So much so that there's an entire gameplay style dedicated to generating fear in your enemies. In this case, making enemies scared is actually a huge gameplay benefit, too. When an enemy's panicked, they're more likely to shoot each other. Uh, like, they can get spooked, they can fall off ledges, and they don't raise an alarm, among other things. So making the bad guy is scared in this game can create some amazing unscripted moments of chaos when enough of them are freaking out. There are a few ways to scare enemies too. The simplest is to hang their corpses from posts, Batman style, but you can also get some equipment like darts that drug them or outfits that have unique fear effects connected to them. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this game. They took the fear mechanics that were introduced in Batman and just took them to the next level. Uh, the fear powers can even be kind of tricky to pull off at times, but they're so incredibly satisfying. It's, it's really a good game. And number two is Ghost of Tsushima. Out of all the open world games out there, Ghost of Tsushima is probably the most fun to scare your enemies in. As your infamy on the island grows, you gain new abilities that have the potential to scare your Mongol enemies and cause them to run away. The best out of all of these has got to be the Ghost Stance, however. If you do manage to do enough damage while avoiding taking a hit, you'll charge the Ghost Meter, and when it's activated, you become this unstoppable demon that the enemy is terrified of. Go figure. And, like, they freeze in terror. They cower all over the place when you just calmly walk up to them and kill them with a brutal takedown. Enemies don't get a lot more scared than this. It's just incredibly satisfying to pull off, and probably one of the best depictions of fear and gaming, all truth told. And finally at number one is The Darkness. If you want to play some games as an unstoppable monster, it doesn't get much better than The Darkness games. The level of destruction and terror you can unleash is almost unmatched, especially in a first person view. It's just incredibly visceral. And almost every encounter you're in devolves into total chaos as enemies go from organized to panic to terror as you effortlessly manage to shoot them, slice them up, rip out their hearts, generally just do whatever you want. The second game is more over 
the top violent, but I think the first one's better about showing how terrified the guys you fight are, both in the story and from a gameplay perspective. The final section of the first Darkness game is really perfect for showing what a terrifying monster you've become as you just like effortlessly tear through the final defenders. It's really cool and it's an underrated game that does an excellent job in showing how scary a video game protagonist can actually be. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a course of subscriptions, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter, Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.